Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to start the implementation of our new project. So as it's a wallpaper website, I'm just going to call our project Wallpaper and as you can see it's gone ahead and downloaded the latest version of Symfony, which in this case is Symfony 3.2.8 into a directory which is called Wallpaper. It's telling us that we need to update app config parameters YAML, which we do to add in our database settings, but we're not going to need the database in this video, though we will for the project. But for now I'm just going to skip over that part and we'll come back to configuring it when we need it. So pretty much what we need to do is change directory into the wallpaper directory and then run php bin console server start. So I'll do that, but before running that command what I'm going to do is just do a composer update and let it do its thing. And that's just so that we're starting with the very latest dependencies. And then as it says we can do a php bin console server colon start and we should be good to go. Okay, so in the background I've got PHP Storm open, which is currently just indexing through that new wallpaper directory. And then what I'm going to do whilst it does that is jump across to getbootstrap.com because we'll need the starting point for our site from there. And I'm also going to jump across to code review videos, flash messages. It's just for the snippet that I want to include in our project. Now, as we started the Symphony development server, what I can also do is browse across that 127001 port 8000 and we can see the starting point for a Symphony project. Okay, so on Bootstrap, under getting started, I'm going to take a copy of this top line, just the style sheets, I'm not really interested in the JavaScript or the theme. And then inside our project, under app, resources, views, in the base, it's below the title but above block style sheets. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in and reformat the code as I've been told off for that before. And the reason that I put this above the block style sheets is because this is going to get loaded first and then anything that we decide inside one of our templates to include in the block style sheets will override this. But whilst I'm here, what I might also do is add in a link, rel style sheet with a href pointing at asset, which is a function provided as part of the Symphony framework. And we'll just point this at CSS styles.css and we'll close off that tag and what that's going to do is essentially point at the web directory. So in here, what we can do is create ourselves a new file in the directory of CSS called styles.css. We don't need to put anything in that file at the moment, but it's there so that we can use it whenever we need to. And again, that one comes below Bootstrap so that it gives us that ability to override as needed. So anything inside our templates will override anything inside styles and anything inside styles will override anything inside the Bootstrap min CSS. So we'll come back to the bootstrap doc shortly, but for now, I just want to take a copy of this template here, just in case we need it inside our project. It's just a general starting point that I take. So under resources, views, as a top level template, I'm gonna add in flash messages.html.twig, and just paste in those contents. And then inside our base, inside the body, we'll have a div with the class of container. We'll pop the body inside that container and then we'll include above that, that flash messages template. So this being a wallpaper website, the next thing that I'm gonna do is to go to Google under images, and I'm just gonna search for something generic like summer. I'm gonna go under tools, size, and then I'm gonna set exactly 1920 times 1080. And this just gives us a bunch of images that are perfect to fit as wallpapers on our website. Now, if you're thinking of putting this live in any way, Make sure that you tick the label for reuse box. Otherwise, just go with whatever you like. So I'm just going to take a copy of this one. I'm going to pop this under web and I'm going to create a new folder inside web, which I'm going to call images. You can call it anything you like, of course. I'm going to save that directly into there. Now we're not overly concerned with allowing users to upload images in this instance and there are security implications around that but that's for a different discussion. So with that image, that's good enough. I'm going to get rid of that and take a look back in my project. You can see under images, I've now got that image. So to give ourselves something to see, I'm going to go into source, app bundle, controller. I'm going to rename the default controller and I'll just call this gallery controller. I don't want any of that. So we'll create a folder called gallery, which will have an index HTML twig. We'll have an image, which we know is going to be the name of this file. So everything's just hard coded at the moment, but this will give an indication of how it all works when it's not. 
probably not going to need the request, so just get rid of that. Set this off to be slash gallery. Call this gallery controller. As this is going to be a gallery, what I'll do is rather than just pass in one image, I'll pass in an array and we'll say that array contains one key called images, which is going to contain our array, which only contains this one image at the moment. So just to clarify there, render takes three arguments, the name of our template, which in this case we don't actually have as of yet, we'll create that in a sec, that'll live under app resources, in this case gallery, and then it'll be called index.html. The second argument is our array of parameters, so that has to be an array. Inside that array, we have a key called images, which itself contains an array because it's going to be a gallery, so we expect there to be more than one image ultimately. And inside that array at the moment, we just have the single image. So we could just get rid of that variable there and just have it like that. Maybe that makes it a little bit more obvious as to what we're doing. So again, I'll just take a copy of that there under resources, views, create a new file. Nice little feature of PHP Storm. If you pass in the directory in the slash, it will automatically create you the directory as well, or directories if you have multiple slashes. And so we'll start off here and we'll say we're going to extend the base.html.twig, which means we'll need to put our content inside the block body. And if you're unsure on any of this, I will link to previous videos in the show notes, which explain this in a little bit more detail. And then rather than me typing all this out, what I'm going to do, try and make use of a bootstrap component. On the thumbnails, have something like this. So just copy and paste that in, tweaking it a little bit. So we'll just say, in our case, if we're on a small screen, let's have it as six. In other words, two images a row. If we're on a medium-sized screen, most laptops or whatever, then we'll have three images in a row. We don't need to worry about the alt at the moment, the alt text. We'll just say our image lives in slash images, and then whatever the name of the image that's been passed in. Now we're working with flat arrays here pretty much, so we don't have like image.file name or anything like that. But we will do, as we go through this project, we'll replace this with objects. But for now, this should be good enough. Okay, so back here, we'll do php bin console, debug router, make sure that our root is showing. So it's home page, but it's slash gallery. Probably want to change it up. It's like gallery, we'll just rename this to gallery. And then from our page, we'll go to slash gallery. Uh, I think I've called it images. And I've also given it an array, so that's not going to work. So what we'll need to do here, Let's create ourselves a little loop and we'll say for image in images remember we're passing in a key of images which contains an array so for each entry in that array we'll just call it an image close off that for loop where we want it to end and now we should be good because now it's just referencing that file path or file name and now we can see we have one image and if we go back in here duplicated a bunch of times we have many images and it's three to a row because again Inside our index, we're on that medium sized screen according to Bootstrap's responsive grid. So this is gonna serve as the basis for the rest of our application. Even though right now everything's hard coded, we know that stuff works in a very fundamental fashion. We know that if images are popped inside this web images directory, then we can display them. We can create ourselves a little gallery. Of course, right now we're hard coding everything, but you can imagine how this data might come back from the database. So before moving on to our database backed approach, we'll look at a way to implement pagination with the aim to keep things as simple as possible until they have to become more complicated.